Hello, dear friends. Welcome to Embracing New Life and Dream Church. All people, all nations, everyone, all colors, tribes, you are welcome here. I love you and I welcome you with love of Jesus Christ. Only person that can love you unconditionally. I have an amazing time today before and now I'm having this great God time and I just, I cannot be selfish. I had to share with you. So I want to welcome my amazing guest in Jesus Christ, Dr. Kevin Zaydai. Welcome, Kevin. How are you? Sick. I'm so excited. The Lord's here already. <laughs> here. I'm so excited yes. too. And uh, we had two great programs today and then you got to minister to a group of wonderful people and God released their destiny today. God had done so many wonderful things. Yes. And recently I had a life-changing experience, another one, with your newest book. Okay, so that book is Praying from the Heavenly Realms. Praying from the Heavenly Realms. And I mean, we are all praying. Some people are praying, they say, I can pray more, but people have these prayers years after years after years. And I've been there. And you pray and you pray, then you get discouraged. You feel like God is whether not hearing me, but, or he doesn't care. Other people's prayers are answered mm -hmm. and my prayer is not answered. What is happening? And people start really getting downcast and discouraged. But when I was reading your book, I was learning about how to pray the prayers that God can answer. I mean, they are like, the moment you are praying, they are answered prayers. Yes. T tell, please, I, I think, I mean, come on, don't you want to know how to pray? And when you pray, your prayers are answered? I, who doesn't want to pray those prayers, right? So don't pray anything else, but pray only answered prayers. And I want to hear from you, how, how can we pray those prayers? Uh, well, first of all, Ishik, actually Jesus taught us really, uh, really how to pray already <laughs> and um, pretty much guaranteed us that whatever we ask, we would receive. I mean, it's, I'm just quoting him. Yes. Um, it's in red and the, even the best scholars can't take that out of the Bible. So he's already said it. He's already told us that if we'll believe that we can receive from God and when we pray, we should believe that we receive and we shall have it. He also said, if, you're, if my words abide in you and you abide in me, you can ask what you will. That's yes. pretty strong language, That's you big. know, and even in the original language, it still says will. It yes. says you can't even explain it away. It's whatever you desire uh, will be given to you and uh, to make your joy full from the Father. He wants to fulfill your heart's desires. Yes. And um, doesn't it say in Psalms 23 in the Old Testament, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, wow. not need. I shall not want. That's pretty good. That's, because he supplies all your needs. Yeah, so that's already taken care of. But see, what happened was when I met Jesus, I realized that he's good for his word. And you know what the secret about answer prayer is? Is that we don't know what it's like for somebody to keep their word. Wow. Think about it. Uh, we wait for somebody to, to, to show up and they're 20 minutes late. And, you, and they say, oh, that's just Sally. That's, she's always 20 minutes late. Well, then you get known by your word. Yes. But your word is not good. Wow. So think about it. We have been programmed to not believe when somebody tells us something. We have to check it out. We have to do an, a background check. Wow. You know, we, we, we have to verify everything, right? Okay, well, when I met Jesus, I realized that he's been verified. Uh, he, the throne that God sits on in Psalms 89 says that his foundation, and I saw the foundation of the throne. There's all these uh, different layers. Mm -hmm. One is justice. One is righteousness. One is truth. I love it. So he, when he sits on his throne, he can't say anything but the truth because he's not a man that he should lie, right? Okay, so this is what the, the, key, the key to getting your prayers answered is, is that whatever God has said is true and that there is absolute truth in heaven. Yeah. And so we, we have to, as Christians, adhere to what's already been said. Mm -hmm. So it's just as powerful what you have on your coffee table called the Bible. <laughs> There's six of them in your house. You only need one of them. And how, you how did you know I have six of them? <laughs> when I met him, this is what I thought. I, you know, this whole thing about faith and having faith and uh, the disciples are like, please uh, give us more faith. Yes. You know, um, you know, if you're willing, Lord, you can make me whole. Yes. And Jesus was like, I am willing, you know, and um, he said, well, even if you had a little seed, uh, like a mustard seed of faith, you can say this mountain be removed. And how the centurion said, Lord, you don't even have to come to my house. Just speak the word. 
Wow. See, what, what I realized about Jesus was is, is that we don't discern him uh, who he really is. And that is there is no difference between him and his word. So like if I tell you that I'm going to show up like with my airline, what, uh, for 29 years, there were 150 people waiting for me every morning to, to come an hour early and get the plane ready and take them from point A to point B. Now they paid to, and trusted me to show up. So if I was even 30 seconds late, guess what my company did? They fined me $1,100. Really? Because I didn't keep my word. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah, you know what, though? <laughs> now you are giving me some ideas I for know, late but employees. You know what? It was amazing how I kept my word after that. <laughs> wow. See, the power of, of keeping my word became really strong when I started losing money working for Southwest yes. Airlines. Yes, yes. Instead of making money. Okay, so when I saw that God was good for what he said, and that Jesus was backing me up as, his, as, as part of the kingdom of God now, as a child of God, yeah. that I was adopted in, that I had, uh, I had been given the name of God that's stamped on me. I, God owns me, yeah. and I'm set apart for him, that I get everything he has. See, the covenant that's talked about in Psalm 89, uh, that, he, that he won't revoke. Yes. See, and the reason why is it talks about those layers in Psalm 89 about justice and righteousness. So when God speaks, he has full authority. So prayers, according to God's word, are always answered. Now, what people don't understand is, is that there's warfare down here. Just ask Daniel, right? And Daniel, Daniel, he prayed. Psalms, uh, or in uh, Daniel, uh, he, he was praying and he was reading the book of Jeremiah. So think about this, a huge prophet named Jeremiah wrote probably 175 years before Daniel was even born. Daniel's reading Jeremiah's scroll, it says, and he got to Jeremiah 29 where Jeremiah was prophesying yes. before Daniel was born that there would come this time when Israel would be hauled off to Babylon and they would be captives there for 70 years. But at the end of the 70 years, they would cry out to God and God would hear them and answer them. And because he had a plan for them that was an expected and a good plan that was uh, a plans to prosper. Wow. And it goes into Jeremiah 29, 11 that we all quote. Yes. But we didn't know that, that all of Jer Jeremiah 29 is talking about Daniel. So Daniel's sitting there in captivity reading Jeremiah and he goes, wait a minute, this is me. Yes. He found himself in the Bible. Jesus said, that's what you tell the people. You go back and you tell everyone everywhere I send you to find themselves in the Bible. Wow. To find yourself because you're in there. See, Daniel said, wait a minute. It's been over 70 years. We're, we're almost running late. So he began to see God and the angel shows up. Wow. Okay, the angel shows up. He said, God heard you the first day you prayed, but we've been fighting to get to you. So everybody out in the, uh, in, in the audience listening to me right now, you have to remember that God is always going to uh, accomplish his word, but there's a war going on. Yes. And, and Satan was withstanding the angels of God. Even Paul the Apostle, he said, listen, he said, I longed to come to you last year, Corinthians, but I couldn't because Satan hindered me. Can you imagine that? The wow. Apostle Paul was hindered by the devil. Jesus said, listen, I'm going to my own hometown, but I couldn't do many miracles there because of their unbelief. Because, see, they discerned him as a carpenter's son, and that's what they got. They got a carpenter's son. Wow. But, see, we, we're not like that, are we? We discern him as a son of God, and he's good for his word. And so Daniel saw performance of God's word because he saw that it was time and it was a season, and he saw himself yes. in the word of God. And so that's what, uh, saw, that's what John 15 is talking about, Ishik, is he, he told me, he said, write a book about seated with me in the heavenly realms, Kevin. He said, but talk about how that I already want to answer their prayers. Yeah. I already want to do that. It's my, it's, it's, it, Jesus said, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yeah. So he's not withholding anything. Now, I met him face to face. He kissed me on the cheek and sent me back. But with that kiss, he, he assured me that I cannot fail, not as an apostle or a prophet, but as Kevin. Oh. You see, he believes in me. And I saw that he believed in everybody. And, the, and people don't have to uh, go through what they've been going through anymore. That the, that the curse has been broken by Jesus Christ. Right now, Amen. the curse has been broken, and our prayers can be answered, and they will be answered. But it's because God is faithful. He cannot be anything that he's not. So think about this. You can never stop being who you are. Mm -hmm. But see, your word, like when you say something, you do it. I've noticed that about you. Everything you've told me, you've done. Aww. See, so I know you by your word. 
See, so if we know God by his word, we know we can't fail, right? Amen. Because he's already given us the assurance. I mean, is it not true that Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans? Yeah. So there's some of a, a people out there right now, they feel left out. You feel like you've been left. You're like, an, mm -hmm. you're, you're orphaned. But Jesus said, listen, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to go, but I'm going to send another one like me who is the comforter. And he's going to be with you forever. Yes. Forever is a long time. Mm. So right now the Lord's touching you. And he's, I mean, I'm seeing people right now being set free because God's love is, is, is like a comforter is coming on. People right now all over the world, people are being touched because they're not left alone. That's what's happening in Ishik right now. Yes. Because I can't feel it. The, the, the Lord, did you know, Ishik, since I come back uh, from heaven, I, I don't even pray for myself. You can ask my wife. I, I, it's been 10 to 15 years since I prayed for myself. I never pray for myself anymore. I, I, I pray hours a day but I let the Holy Spirit bring people to my my, my remembrance and I pray for them um, the only prayers that I actually do pray are Ephesians chapter 1 verses 17 through 23 where Paul prayed to the Ephesians and said yes. prayed for them he said let the eyes of their heart be enlightened that wow. they may know the hope to which they've been called that they would know the glorious inheritance in the saints that they yes. would know the power that rose Jesus from the dead yes. um, and, and that, that that same power that rose Jesus from the dead is dwelling in me um, my eyes of uh, uh, a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him would come upon me yes. that's all I pray I pray that and I, I pray I pray John 15 yes. I pray that I'm in the vine and he's in me his words abide in me and I can ask what I will and it'll be done for me and you know what I just believe believe that people are starting to see that that faith is not hard yes it, it's not hard at all because you you just have to see that God does not lie Amen. he is he's going to keep his promises to us we need to learn to trust him more. And prayer is, is uh, uh, think about this. I have one more thing I have to tell you. Is, is he, said, he said, when you ask Kevin, you will receive. When you seek, you will find. And when you knock, the door is going to be open to you. Um, he said, did you notice there's no uh, disclaimer or asterisk by that verse? There's no like, uh, unless you're this age or you've done this in your past. Or um, he, he said, you will receive. You, yes. The door will be open to you. And did you know, if you look that word up and study it, even a five-year-old could do it. Just look up the, uh, the word for ask. It's, it's actually the word command. If wow. you will demand, but command. <clears throat> in other words, it's not God keeping back people's prayers. It's the enemy, just like Daniel went through. And so... A lot of times when we pray, we should just be settled. And I'll tell you the secret of this is after you pray, you just say, Lord, I just thank you for working. Because see, I saw that the angels immediately after we pray, they start to work. So when I was on the other side, I thought, oh, man, I wish I would have known this. But see, I should have known mm -hmm. it. But I saw angels are right there to, to start to work it. Amen. And so people right now, as they're hearing me talk, they're being activated because they, they, they know that they're angels. Everybody has them. Wow. We all need help. And so the angels actually have been sent to work out every situation in person's life. They, they don't, they don't, do you think that they came down here to fail? No. You know, like when they were assigned, they're excited to help Christians. They're excited to help believers. Wow. See, because they, they know they're helping God if they help us. So they, they never think of failing. Can you wow. imagine your angels right now? They're not, they're not thinking they're going to fail at all. Amen. Yeah, they want to accomplish your prayers. This, this is so awesome. <laughs> you, you see, you know, we, we live in our little bubble and sometimes we don't see things because we are talking about another dimension and it is still a mystery. But I can tell you this, um, I have a book coming and it's praying God's word hmm. because praying God's word is praying God's will. So how awesome is that? I, like you said, you said that you don't pray for yourself anymore. I'm a little selfish. I pray for myself, but I only pray for myself God's word. I don't pray anything else anymore. I take the God's word and I pray God's word over my life. So with my wonderful assistant, she's here. Uh, she helped me uh, to write this book, uh, Praying God's Word. Because when you pray God's word, it's already ordained. It's already answered. It is God's word. It's already like imagine a lawyer is delivering you. It's, it's like a legal document. And you, ha he, you are giving the permission. You are giving the authority when you read God's word and you pray and you just say amen. And then what, what happens is I pray. I prayed God's word out loud every single day. 
And I, I pray John 14, 15, 16, yes. and 17. It's crazy. I pray that prayer every single day. I stop and I say, your word said you can ask me anything and I will answer. Now I am asking you this, that, that, that. But I go with his word. So come on, people, we, we have the sword of the spirit right. that we need to take it in yes. our hands. You know what? Many of you are. You have the sword of the spirit, just like Brother Kevin uh, prophesied right now. You have six Bibles, and I have six Bibles <laughs> in the house everywhere. Like my night table, I have exactly six Bibles in the house everywhere. In the kitchen, I have a Bible. So you have the sword of the spirit, and the sword of the spirit is just sitting there. An enemy coming and punching you and kicking you, kicking your family, your children, and, and your sword is sitting there. Mm -hmm. And you are going to your pastor, you are going to other Christians, you are going everywhere crying and weeping, and you are saying, oh, poor me, you know the enemies, hello, you have a machine gun, you have an atomic bomb, you have, a, you have the sword of the spirit, you can just take it and send it to the enemy's camp, and you take your Bible in your hand and you open it up, you say, thus say the Lord. You see, you can't say that with the word of God. It is, thus say the Lord. And it's an answer prayer. What's the matter with you? Open your mouth and be vocal. You know why? Because enemy is called the kingdom of the power of the air. He's the prince of the power of the air. He's in the air. Demons are like a breath. And when you speak the word of God, you know what you are doing? You are sending an atomic bomb to the enemy's camp and he's destroyed. So it is time for you to take your sword in your hand and like, you know, I don't watch that, but like in the Star Wars, you can go like cut the enemy into pieces. An enemy can be tormented in your presence if you pray the word of God, if you praise and worship out loud. So th these are the secrets. So tell, tell me more. I, I want to ask you something. Okay. And you, that changed my life. You told me praying in tongues. And that, that is like huge. Because, you know, I, I'm a spiritual Christian. And I, pray, I was praying in tongues. But until you told me that you pray like three, four hours in tongues. And that opens the floodgates of heaven. Tell, tell us about what Jesus told you about tongues. Well, y you know, Paul... Paul was, was saved at a, at a later age, and um, then he was spirit-filled. And it, he, he, he killed Christians. He had ki Christians killed. But he was telling all the churches, you can read it in all the letters he wrote to the churches in the Bible. He said, I was set apart as an apostle from birth. Yes. But yet he was killing Christians. See, he, did, he had to come into that. But this is what he said. He said, um, I pray in tongues more than all of you. He would say that, and he said, but when, when, you, when, when, when you pray in, the, in tongues, he said, your spirit prays, but your mind has no understanding. And uh, when the Holy Spirit came on the people in the day of Pentecost, uh, that, that day when they waited, uh, Jesus told them to wait, there was uh, this mighty rushing wind, and then there was fire that came on people's heads, and then they had utterance, and they spoke in other languages. Mm -hmm. And then the place was shaken to where people thought they were drunk, in midday. Mm -hmm. This is how the Holy Spirit was introduced to us. So what has happened to us? Yes. What has happened to us? Like where's the, where's the rushing mighty wind and the fire on our heads and where's the utterance and where is uh, the joy of the Lord so strong that we, we act drunk in, a, in the middle of the day because the Spirit is so strong on us? Well, uh, Jesus I mean, told did, me. Did I tell you the other day, I feel so drunk, I cannot drive. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, I, they cannot give me DUI, yeah. but I cannot drive. I right. told you, right? Yes. I am so drunk yeah. in the Holy Spirit. People tell me, what do yeah. you take? I say, I'm nat supernaturally high. But, yeah. but seriously, you can be like that. Right. And see, being filled with the Spirit, uh, part of what happens to you is there's a, the river that Jesus talked about that is flowing out of you. I saw that river in heaven. It comes from the throne. Yes. It's like liquid diamonds that come out of the throne of God and go through heaven, and it pours off into each believer and comes up as a river of living water through us. So that water that's flowing out of me right now, it wants to give utterance. So the spirit of life, he wants to speak life, and part of that might be in another language we know not of. And so Jesus told me, he said, the single most um, and supernatural thing that you can do every day is yield to the Spirit and pray in the, in the Spirit and pray in other tongues and build yourself up. He said, because the Spirit 
according to Romans chapter 8, verse 26, it says that we don't know, in our weakness, we don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit in our weakness comes and takes hold of us. Yes. He's a counselor. So he's going to usher you in and he's going to say, listen, I'm going to help you. And the Holy Spirit will give you utterance. And he will, you, you, when you pray out, you're praying out mysteries. It says that your spirit is praying, but it's not to men, it's to God. So you're speaking to God. Okay, so I'm, I'm compacting this really quickly, but um, he told me that when you pray in the spirit, are you ready for this? Yes. He said you're actually praying your book that's written in heaven out about wow. you. So he said, he said, Kevin, the best prayer you can pray is, Lord, open my book of life put it before you and turn to today. Wow. Put your finger on whatever it is that's next and I agree with you. Wow. Bring it to pass. And I see, me and my wife see miracles every day. Every, sometimes every hour we see a miracle of some sort because we're praying in the spirit and in, in, in building ourselves up in the most holy of faith as Jude 20 talks about. Mm -hmm. But the spirit, he's, he's, he's wanting to help us. He's wanting to uh, come in and make us strong in our weakness. So here's the thing that I, I feel like I'm supposed to give this word uh, to the people. And that is, is that Jesus told me, along with praying in the spirit, is that you have to know that your weakness is your friend. Is it, does that not sound like, wow. he, 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 Paul said, in my weakness, I'm made strong. He said, so I, I actually glory in my weakness. Okay, so if you have a weakness in your life, Jesus said your next step is a supernatural step because you're going to need the Spirit to step in and be strong. So the Lord wanting to step in, he told me, he said, tell people to find out where they end. Find their line where they can't go on anymore. Mm -hmm. He said, because the next step is a supernatural step. So your next step in your weakness is you yield to the Spirit of God yes. and let the Lord build you up. And your next step will be a supernatural step. So it, Paul said, in my weakness, I am made strong. See, he was not afraid to admit that he was weak. He told the world in the Bible that he was weak. He was an apostle, but he also knew his limitations. Jesus said, tell the people, get quickly to, your, to the end of yourself. Yes. So like every day, I get up and I say, Lord, I can't go without you today. If you don't go, I'm not going. I was just like Moses. Yes. You have to be just like Moses. Say, Lord, if you're not going with us, we're not going. Because you got to discern that you can't do this life on your own. This life is not easy. It's, it's not easy, and Jesus said it wouldn't be. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I've been to heaven, and I came back. It's not easy down here because you have to trust in God. You have to trust in a realm you can't see. You have to believe that God is with you, even if you don't feel like it. So the Lord told me, he said, encourage people to get to the end of themselves as quick as possible. Um, I mean, even Smith Wigglesworth, uh, one of my favorite Mine people. Too. And um, he said, he said, you show me a man that's in wit's end corner where he's finished. He said, and I'll show you a man I can use, that God can use. Wow. God can use a man who's in wit's end corner because wow. he's come to the end of his spell. And um, I'm just encouraging everyone here to understand that you're not supposed to uh, be able to handle everything. God knows that. Jesus said that in this life you're going to have trouble, but I have overcome this world. And you have to understand that the Spirit That's has good. been sent. Um, I saw him in heaven. I saw that he was able. He's a counselor. He's yes. going to help you. He's going to tell you what to do. Um, there's, there's things that are going on in your life. Tomorrow they could be completely fixed because you uh, committed your way to the Lord and trusted in Him. This, this is gonna happen. You watch what happens when you trust. Like right now, I just feel like we're, you're supposed to pray a prayer for people to commit yes. uh, their way to the Lord, like it says yes. in Proverbs. And, um, and, and let's just pray a prayer of commitment. Okay. I feel like you're supposed to do that. Okay, hallelujah. Mm. I, I feel the same thing. I was waiting and uh, I felt like God is saying a lot of people right now, and you are one of them. This it is for you. You are at the turning point. Today is a turning point in your life. You are at the crossroad. And today you are turning your back to your ways, to God's ways. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus for you and for your life from this day on. You are not going to fight your battles anymore. The Lord says the battle is mine. And you need to turn this over to him. And instead of fi fighting against heaven's agenda, and start praying God's will from God's word for your life. So God is starting a new chapter in your life today.
You are not hearing this whether you are in the audience or a cameraman, you are in the control room, or you are watching it on social media or through satellite TV. You are not hearing this program by accident. This is a turning point in your life. All you need to do is to say, Lord, you have written my book. All the days in your book is ordained for me. And right now, I want to walk in my destiny that is written in your book. Hallelujah. Say it. I am going to live. I am going to live. From this moment on. From this moment on. My destiny. My destiny. Is written. Is written. In the book of Jesus Christ. In the book of Jesus Christ. For me. For me. I am not going to walk. I am not going to walk. Any other path? Any other path? Other than the path? Other than the path? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has ordained for me. Has ordained for me. Okay, this is why, God, in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen, Jesus. Name. This is why God spoke to Joshua and said, "Do not turn it to the right or to the left. Meditate on my word day and night." So it is. That is the scripture I want to leave with you. Don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. Walk into your destiny in Jesus Christ. And today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can invite him like talking to a friend. You can talk to God and say, Jesus, come and live inside of me. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And you rose from the dead on the third day. And I repent from my sins, which means I'm changing my way. Just like I said, I'm changing my way right now. And I, I am asking you to be the center of my life. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. I love you. God bless you. And thank you so much, oh, Kevin, so for we, being so with me today. Wonderful. Wonderful. Have a wonderful life. Walk into your destiny. Hallelujah.